Hey guys, it's Milana. Welcome back to my channel. Koa happens to smell like um, lemon salad dressing right now because he just snuck himself into the trash and was eating a salad dressing container. So he smells quite nice actually, <laughs> like uh, very lemony and fresh. Anyways, that is not what this video is about. This video is about um, releasing trauma in a way that is healthy and sustainable and in a way that you can process it and at a rate that you can process it. Um, and so I've been getting a lot of questions um, and concerns from people about things that have happened to them from doing fascia maneuvers. Um, my brother did one of my fascia videos and he called me and he's like, hey, after doing that video, I was literally like hunched over the toilet dry heaving. Like what's up with that? So I want to address that. Um, when you do fascia maneuvers, you are releasing stored trauma in your body. And you know, if you've never done trauma work before, if you've never done healing work before, even if you have, um, but especially if you haven't, that is however many years you've been alive, you have that many years of trauma stored up in your body. So as you release it, it needs to come out and exit your body. So everybody's body is different and likes to release trauma in different ways. Um, and it could even be different depending on what type of trauma it is. Um, so some people will sweat a lot. Some people have really strange bowel movements. Some people throw up. I have gotten a lot of bloody noses, which is interesting. So, and it can depend like which time, like sometimes I get bloody noses, sometimes I have really strange bowel movements, sometimes I feel nauseous or lightheaded, I have passed out from doing fashion maneuvers before. If you feel like you're having really intense reactions and responses, this could be a sign to take it easy, maybe take a day or two off from doing fashion maneuvers because as you're releasing this trauma, your body has to process it every time it comes up. So just work intuitively with yourself, with your body, if you're like, whoa. Like there was one day where I got like three bloody noses in a day and I was like, I'm gonna take two to three days off of doing fashion maneuvers and let my body recalibrate now that it has released all of this energy, recalibrate into this new state of being, into this literally new fresh body before I release more because it might just be too much. And we want to treat the body with care and with patience because it has taken us through life for however many years we've been alive. So as we're cleansing and purging it out, we need to be really patient with it. The body loves to feel safe. The body needs to feel safe. It needs to feel comfortable and calm. So just give yourself grace with whatever type of releases you're having. If you've done fashion maneuvers before, comment below and let me know what type of energy releases you've experienced. I'm really curious because it seems like there's just so many. I, I'm still hearing of different types of energy releases and I'm like, whoa, that's a new one, but it makes sense. It's like some way that energy is being released from the body. So this, okay. I have two other things to say about this. One is it can be unsafe to release too much energy at once. And the reason I'm going to say this is because I haven't done laundry. Stay with me, okay? I haven't done laundry in like two to three weeks. And I also had friends in town this last weekend. So I had all of this dirty laundry built up of like literally all my clothes. I needed to wash my sheets, I needed to wash my towels, and I needed to wash like all the linens for my guest. So sheets, blankets, towels. You get the picture, it was a lot of laundry. And I went through all the cycles, whatever. Well, I'm actually not even done, I still have more to do. But I have like two huge laundry baskets full of clothes and I have already put away like one laundry basket of stuff, of towels and whatever, but it's like, it is just too much to do all at once that like on top of all my other life stuff, I feel like I don't have time to put it away. So it's gonna take me like a few days to be like, okay, I'm gonna tackle this laundry basket now. That is a lot different from if I do laundry like 
once a week or even like every five days. Refreshing my towels, refreshing whatever dirty clothes, like workout clothes, whatever. That is a lot more sustainable because it's like I can handle doing a load of laundry every like five or seven days. It's when you let it pile up and then you do it all at once. It's too much for me to handle. It's too much for me to process all at once. How does this relate to releasing trauma? Well, it actually made me think of when people do ayahuasca and other um, plant medicines. Because I'm in the spiritual world, I mean, I know a lot of people who use plant medicine, they maybe even use it regularly. And I have never felt called to use plant medicine. I've never felt like attracted to it at all. And there's many, many reasons for that. But one of them is that these plant medicines can be really extreme. Like I've heard so many stories of people who are like, oh yeah, it was like the worst 24 hours of my life. I was like throwing up constantly while having diarrhea. I was in a room with a bunch of people and like, I was facing every single trauma I've ever experienced. Like I've heard people say they saw the devil and like went to hell and just all these insane things. I've heard of people who literally go crazy after doing it and are like, you know, a mental person. So the reason I'm saying this is that the body, I don't, I don't believe personally that the body is designed <laughs> to face a lifetime of trauma and purge a lifetime of trauma in like a plant medicine ceremony. I personally believe that the body knows how to heal itself. The intelligence that created the body knows how to heal the body. Okay. <coughs> I need water. I've been talking too much. I've been talking for seven minutes. Wow. I should have brought a glass of water with me. Um, the decision of shall I continue or should I turn this into two cuts and have to actually edit a video? I don't like editing. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna power through. I think I'm doing okay. So the body has so many mechanisms to naturally heal itself and to naturally do trauma work and do trauma release. And when you do trauma work, like through fascia maneuvers or EFT tapping or meditation, it is the body will only release what it believes it is safe to release in the moment, like the amount, the depth, the intensity, um, in whatever time frame. So it's really like a much, much safer, digestible way to heal your trauma. And like, do you really want to be dependent on like, oh yeah, I do an ayahuasca trip every six months or every year or every two years or whatever. I think it's way more empowering and way more beneficial for your quality of life to have techniques that you know work and practices that you can do anytime, any place, anywhere by yourself. You don't need anyone or anything to do it for you or make you feel a certain way or like get this release for you. It's like, I think you should take the time to learn the practices and have the discipline to work with your body slowly, patiently, allow it the space and the safety and the comfort to release what it needs to in whatever time. And it might take longer than doing an ayahuasca trip or a plant medicine trip, but I think it's a lot more sustainable. And then you can process it mentally along the way. Like you learn so much at every step and different things will come up and then you work through it. But I think that that's way more like how we're designed to be and it's just way safer and way better for you. <sighs> Koa is ready for his five o'clock walk. It is like 5.10 right now and I always walk him at five o'clock. So he's like, mom, can we please go? <gasps> so we're gonna go right after this video. But there's one other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Um, <laughs> this also made me think of, if you've been to a Dr. Joe retreat, it's kind of common that people actually get sick after his retreats. And it's interesting because he does so much research. Like if you go to one of his retreats, they have a whole research team at the back of the retreat and they have people hooked up to like all these wires and they're taking blood samples while they're meditating, like tongue swabs, they're taking people's tears and like measuring them. It's so scientific and they have so much evidence that shows that like, Basically, everyone's biology, everyone's chemistry changes over the course of this seven-day retreat. Like, 
you change your blood, you change your gene expression significantly. Like you raise your immunity, it's insane. So me, little old me, I got sick after one of his retreats and like a lot of my friends did too. And we were like, why did we get sick? But it's actually a really common thing. They, they jokingly call it the Dispenza Influenza. And he has a whole blog article about it so it's really funny. I can link it in the description below. It'll be linked there if you want to read about it. But he basically explains the science of it. And it's the same thing that I was just talking about, how when you release trauma, when you're releasing stored energy, your body has a lot to process. I don't know, because I haven't asked these people, but I would bet that people get really sick after plant medicine trips and ayahuasca trips, because your body is processing so much and it just needs that time to heal and to continue recovering. So after the meditation retreats, it's pretty common that people will be kind of like under the weather for a few days. And it's because their body is literally a new body and it's just exiting all that old yucky stored energy that's the lower vibration, like your whole body is being purified and your vibration is being raised. So you just gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. I think that was everything I wanted to tell you guys on this topic of releasing energy in a natural, healthy, sustainable way. Um, oh, one last update. This last weekend, speaking of Joe Dispenza, was Joe Dispenza's walking meditation walk through the world. And it was so incredible. If you were there, if you did the walking meditation, the worldwide walking meditation, comment and let me know where you did it and how it was. Rita, I was thinking of you. I was sending you a big hug through the void. I was thinking of you, Jamie. I was thinking of all of you um, that are so sweet and comment on my channel and that show up and watch these videos and make an effort to change your life and to manifest your dreams and to make the world a more beautiful, divine place and to live your best life. I was really thinking of all of you and sending you all so much healing and so much love. And it was such a powerful meditation to like be with so many people. I think there was about, I'm really bad at like estimating how many people are at things, but I think there was like between 60 and 80 people at my group. So that was really cool. And we're gonna be meditating regularly together. I think like once a month, we're gonna go um, do walking meditation at the beach. It is so funny. When you do walking meditation, walking past people who don't know what's going on, especially in the big group, because we look like walking zombies. We're just like trying to stay in trance, not making eye contact with anybody. Just, you know, walking as your future self. Like some people have their arms up. Like I'm frequently smiling. Sometimes I'm crying. Um, but it's just so funny because in the corner of your eye, you see those people that are like, what is going on? And you're just like, I'm in love with life. <sighs> So anyways, yeah, the walk was amazing. I'm excited for the next one. I know he's gonna do more. And um, I just wanna share one main takeaway from the walk. It was like, essentially be the change to change the world. Like don't wait for the world to change before you are happy and before you love your life and before you're a changed person. Like, no, you should change first and by you changing, you change the world. Oh my gosh, okay, one last thing about this. I had this vision in a meditation yesterday and I was like, you know, projecting all around the world into these different places. And then I had this download and it was, it took me back, back to like the basic quantum physics lesson where they take two atoms and they separate them in remote locations. So they'll have one atom here in California and one atom in Africa. So literally on like other sides of the world. And I don't remember exactly what they do to it, but like they do something to the atom to like change it. And these two atoms that were once together, once they're separated, if one has this specific reaction or thing happen to it, the other has that reaction simultaneously. There is no time delay which goes to show that there's no such thing as time and space. Everything is interconnected. If it happens here, it happens there simultaneously. And why is this important? I'm gonna tell you, it's because we all stem from source. 
we all come from the Big Bang. At one point, there was singularity. There was one infinitesimally small thing, okay? I don't know how else to describe it. Just one little point. And then, boom, the Big Bang happened, and that caused separation. So everything stems from the Big Bang. You and me come from the Big Bang. The sun, the earth, like the flower in the pot behind you. Koa, my little dog, we all come from the Big Bang, which means at one point in time, our energy was connected in one point. So once we've separated, we still have access to have things happen across the universe like that at the same time with no time delay. So that is why... <laughs> I believe, at least that's what Source was trying to show me in my meditation. Or maybe I got the message completely wrong and my angel guides are like, oh my gosh, girl, that is not what we're trying to tell you. I'm gonna say that is what they were trying to tell me, is that when you heal yourself, when you change yourself, when you decide to be kindness, when you decide to be honor and nobility and light and love, that you affect all the particles around the world, all the people, all of the energy, all of the vibrations, you vibrate through the entire void, through the entire universe. So be the change that you wanna see, be the light, be the goodness. I need to get a glass of water and take my dog for a walk. Bye guys, love you so much. Oh, by the way, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Okay, love you, bye.